probably worth just spending a little bit of time referencing the last 10 years in Fonterra. I'm on the board of Fonterra, have been for the past nine years, and um, my family and I are dairy farmers and have been forever. If you go back since the first full financial year of 2002 of Fonterra to last year's financial result, our milk volumes have grown from 13.4 billion litres a year to 15.4 billion litres a year last year to 17 billion litres this year. Growth is a key aspect that we need to deal with in Fonterra. Milk volume uh, assets rather have grown from 10.7 billion to 15.5 billion today. Revenue has grown from 12.4 billion dollars to 20 billion dollars or just under 20 billion dollars last year which puts us at 27 percent of New Zealand's export earnings. And interestingly the payout that we pay our farmers made up of milk price and a dividend has moved from $3.63 in 2002 through to a record last year of $7.90. So governance in Fonterra is a unique privilege, challenge and an opportunity. And in thinking about this presentation over the past couple of weeks, I've got our cooperative down to four P's, I think. Proximity, purpose, protect and passion. I'll just go through my four P's. Proximity. Yes, we are very, very close. We are one big family with all the foibles of your typical reality TV show family. I happen to know this because I've got four daughters and so I have to turn those TV shows off all the time. Um, so somewhat more complex than your typical family, but a family nonetheless. And I guess a very current example is that in three days time we have one of our most important decisions to make as we evolve our capital structure to put permanent capital uh, into our cooperative. We've just had a round of farmer meetings 3,000 of our farmers or thereabouts have turned up and since then as Nicola touched on before most of us directors have been on the road doing three or five three to five meetings a day with smaller groups of our farmers it's not unusual we have we have just magnificent engagement and discussion of the key issues within our cooperative and I guess from the outside looking in some people have a view that you know the Franz Joseph Glacier moves a little bit quicker than what Fonterra does and it's seen as a weakness they're quite wrong. It is the strength of our cooperative. We have to bring our shareholders with us. We need to listen to what our shareholders say and make sure that our farmers have every chance to understand the issues that are before us at any time. That's what we call healthy or smiling tension, I think, Michael. It leads to real consensus and it leads to ensuring that we can move forward in a cooperative manner. And I guess the other comment that was made before is that diversity must be celebrated, not squelched. <coughs> the terminology that we're not actually used to here, but squelched works for me. And um, the reality is we need to listen to that diversity always in our cooperative, but we need to move forward with unity. And that is how we do move forward with, uni with unity. Uh, and I guess in my language, it's about making sure we get the stone out of our shoe, kick the stone out of our shoe so that we can move forward together. Interestingly, in our cooperative, and everyone in this room is very familiar with cooperatives, but you know, a farmer doesn't think twice about ringing up their director uh, any time of the day or night. Uh, no time in the 24-hour, seven-day-a-week um, uh, period is a director uh, not to be rung, really. And I guess I wonder how many other directors in normal investor-owned corporates um, get a phone call in the middle of dinner, or indeed last week in the middle of a rugby test match. Um, so not only is that a difference between a cooperative and a corporate, but it's also the amount of time that we as cooperative directors spend with our shareholders. And that's dealing not only with shareholders but also with cooperative responsibilities generally. I was asked two years ago to keep a rough diary during the year of the time that I spent. And it was interesting that 60% um, of the time that I spent as a director of Fonterra um, was in issues to do with the corporate responsibility rather than what I would term normal um, corporate governance responsibilities. It's fundamental to the job and, and from the outside looking in many think that's a burden but for somebody who's in it um, it's the absolute strength and it's why we do what we do. So proximity, we are very close. Purpose, our farmers in most cases have the significant uh, amount of their capital if not all of it, directly linked to Fonterra. 
they generate 85% plus of their income from their cooperative. And as a Fonterra director, our purpose is very, very clear and it's typical of most producer cooperatives, which is that we must maximise the wealth of our shareholders by selling their milk and all that that entails, and I won't go through the full constitutional definition. But of course we, we do that by maximising the sustainable milk price and maximising the profit. And this is at all times a multiple year view. As directors we are, we are from families that have multi-generational approach to what we do. We all look through the years. You know, a, a, a near term would be a decade. And so our, our thinking as individuals very much influences the thinking of our cooperative and I know that's the same for um, every other cooperative that I come against, that it's all about you know, how do we move forward over a long period of time sustainably. But we have some unique challenges in Fonterra. Because of our very success in New Zealand, the situation here means that we do not have a market price for milk. So we've got to have a robust, transparent method for calculating the value of our farmer's milk. We've been through five independent um, reviews including recently um, from the Commerce Commission. And in all cases, it stood up to that great scrutiny. It is the crucial part of our cooperative governance. And farmers must have absolute confidence, obviously, in what they are being paid for their milk and how that price is derived. And I think milk price is a really good example of the positive evolution that has gone on in the cooperative governance generally of Fonterra over the last decade. Previously, milk price was determined by looking at historical commodity prices. And then Fonterra, not without some commentary globally, um, totally changed the way that dairy commodities were sold. And so today we have the first online trading platform for selling dairy commodities uh, when we launched that in 2008 called Global Dairy Trade. And so now we have a trans fully transparent price for dairy commodities which informs the milk price with the real prices. Actively, it's completely changed the Fonterra business internally. Uh, actively, it drives our business. Every two weeks, the milk price is effectively updated. And it is very, very closely watched by our farmers. I bet there's not many organisations globally where the chairman sends out an email to all of the farmers every two weeks after the auction of all of its products. Again, proximity and very clear purpose. Protection is what drives us though? Protect. All of our cooperative, in our case farmers and cooperative shareholders, deserve the very best possible governance model. And that is not a glib throwaway comment. I know that as I drive to Auckland in the mornings or drive from our farm in Canterbury up to Christchurch and jump on a plane, and I drive past the lights of dairy farmers' cow sheds on at five o'clock in the morning, you know that what our farmers expect from us ultimately from us as individuals and us collectively as a board is to protect their cooperative. In a corporate the relationship is all about capital. That relationship is based purely on, cooperative, on capital but of course in our cooperative that relationship is just so much more complex. Our farmers are our suppliers, they're our shareholders, they're beneficiaries of services and support with all that proximity that I talked about earlier. In Fonterra we have 10,500 shareholding farmers, we have nine elected directors and three of us retire every year. So you talk about accountability, uh, it's very clear what that is. We appoint four independent directors to make up a board of 13. I actually believe that's the most important decision that we make uh, on the Fonterra board. They bring the skills at any given time to complement our strategy and to complement the skill base that our farmers have, uh, have handed to the board from time to time as they elect their farm elected directors. If we get those four appointed directors right, uh, then the, the, what is often called the most important decision, the CEO decision, I believe just flows out of that uh, and you just get a, a cascading out um, and you move in a virtuous cycle. There is no management on the Fonterra board. It's probably interesting to note that it is quite a large board for a cooperative. Um, it is common to have large boards, but we have a board of 13. And we also, of course, have a very wide agenda, um, plainly, um, from Fonterra, given the, the breadth of, uh, of Fonterra. We carry out a large portion of our working committee. 
We have six key committees of Fonterra uh, today, um, including from time to time the odd, um, the odd temporary committee. So a lot of the grunt work is carried out in committees, committees report to the board. In the 1930s, we had 400 cooperatives around the countryside, and their community leaders were the directors of those, those boards, and those, um, those community leaders evolved into becoming better and better directors, and they moved up into, into greater areas of responsibility. And today, that 400 cooperative breeding ground has moved and merged right down to one. And so today, we've got to meet the challenges of today's leadership responsibilities and tomorrow's leadership responsibilities. I personally believe that future governance is the biggest threat to our cooperative. We therefore have cooperative development programs within our cooperative to develop rural leaders. And most importantly, I do say rural, rural leaders generally, uh, and ultimately some of those people hopefully will also become uh, Fonterra directors in the future. Importantly, our governance model must evolve as our cooperative evolves. In the early days, uh, we used to have regional directors. Today, our board is elected nationally. Instead of directors turning up just representing the interests of their neighbours, they must act in the best interest of the cooperative. And I think that has probably been the other crucial um, governance change that we have made in the last de decade. At that stage we put in, when we elected, started electing our board um, by all, direct, all farmers nationally, we put in place a shareholders council whose 35 members are regionally elected and represent the views of the geographic regions. And in my mind there are two fundamental issues to protect our cooperative now and into the future. The first is that farmers must always vote with milk solids. And importantly we need to keep that link also as a further protection between milk solids and shareholding uh, very, very close. And farmers must always maintain the governance and representation structure and hopefully strengthen that over time. The shareholders council and board model that we have in Fonterra is unique to our cooperative. It is rarely seen in the rest of the world. That, evolves our co that enables our cooperative to evolve. What I've heard referred to over time as the cooperative drag can be dealt with in a really constructive manner. It allows discussion to occur in an informed way and allows decisions to be made and enables us to move forward together. And the reality is if we do not evolve, we will not remain globally competitive, both as a cooperative and as New Zealand dairy farmers. And so lastly, passion. My brother and I are um, from, we're, we're the third generation of our family that have been dairy farmers. And we've been benefit, we've benefited greatly over the years by being both suppliers and owners of our cooperative over time. It hasn't always been easy, and I know from a child and before that uh, there has been some very, very real challenges. But Nicola touched on it before. The reality is that a cooperative model for us as dairy farmers is the only possible solution. It just makes sense at every level. We produce a product that's fundamentally toxic in 48 hours unless we can stabilise it. And by the way, we operate at the bottom of the world completely exposed to the volatility in climate and financial affairs globally. So as farmers we must always control our destiny. Fonterra's success is critical to New Zealand, it is critical to our regional economies and it is absolutely critical to our farmer owners. So there is no shortage of passion in our cooperative. So thank you and I just um, want to open up for some really good discussion. It's always a far better way to deal with things in a cooperative, so thanks.